Hello everybody. So welcome back to another video. And as you guys know, I recently opened a retail store, but I did it very quietly. So November 1st, I opened the doors to my retail store. Um, and I just want to talk about my experience so far, what it's been like having a retail store, all the logistics, all the details, and things you probably wouldn't think about when opening a retail store. So I had a hard time finding videos like this on YouTube. Um, I found a few videos and a lot of them were just, you know, boutique owners. Um, I found a few gift shop people, but they weren't really detailed. It was more so like, I'll show you around my retail store. There was a couple people who did detail videos, but hopefully this helps anyone out who's interested in opening their own retail store. So if you guys are new to my channel, um, I am Tiana Coates, the owner of Winding Wake Candles. I started my candle shop online and recently opened my retail store. Um, so it's been quite a journey and we're gonna talk about the cost for cost first. So before even opening up a retail store, I think you might want to check into costs. Obviously, people are going to want to check into that first. So the biggest one is the lease. Um, how much is your lease? I've talked about this before in some previous videos, but to break it down for you, you really want to find a good location. So with location, you really want to be in a spot where there are other shops around you that are drawing business. So maybe by a coffee shop or by a food shop, um, because people generally aren't going to seek out a candle store unless you're just some big name around town. They're, they may not just seek it out um, and drive specifically to that location. So it would be nice to kind of gather foot traffic from other places. Like people tend to seek out cafes because people are addicted to coffee like myself. So they will drive to a coffee shop or they will drive to a pastry place or a food place or something like that. So if you kind of situate yourself near something like that, it might be very useful to look at those locations. Whereas if you are kind of in a standalone place where it's, you know, one shot by itself with nothing else around it, you may have a hard time getting traffic to your store. So kind of keep that in mind. So for me, I am located in downtown area of my town, which is Ferris, Texas. That's where my shop is located. Um, and it's a growing place, so there is some foot traffic around here. The reason I picked this place is because they're building a lot of houses in the next couple of years, but at the moment, there really aren't tons of businesses in my area, so I'm really banking on, you know, um, the future and what they have going on in the future. So they are already building the houses. So I know that the houses are getting built. So I just have to be patient for a bit as other businesses open. We just opened a coffee, uh, well, not we, but they just opened a coffee shop that's really, really good. Um, so I could get foot traffic from that. We also have something called trade days where people sell um, like in the downtown square. And so that brings a lot of walking traffic also. So really think about that before you lock yourself into a lease, which is typically four years. So it's a big commitment to sign a lease. Um, some other things you might wanna think about as far as cost are electricity, toiletries. So usually you're used to operating at home, but you're gonna have to buy those things now for your shop. So. Um, cleaning supplies, mops, bleach, um, depending on if you have a customer bathroom, you might have to supply that for two bathrooms, toilet paper, cleaning, all of that stuff. So you're going to have to factor that in. And I like to buy from quill.com. They have all these bulk cleaning supplies and you can actually get a net 30 account with them. So you can order your supplies and pay for them 30 days later. And it also helps to build up your business credit if you do it that way too. Um, some other costs are, of course, if you're going to have any employees and with a retail store, you may have to get employees if you want to take a day off or you might have to close your shop. Totally up to you and your budget on that and a point of sale system. So I have found that having a really good point of sale system is actually really nice to have. So whenever I go to other shops in town, I'll look at their point of sale system and if they're using something more outdated or kind of look at how they operate with their point of sale system, how many buttons they're pressing or having to wait for their little card reader to go. So I decided to go with Square and it has been great because it integrates with my payroll. I can do all sorts of stuff with Square. My employee can clock in um, with Square. We can do all sorts of tracking. So it really integrates well with 
um, that side and it also integrates with my inventory which I use crafty base so now um, with crafty base I can keep track of sales materials and all that and have it integrate with square so it just works well for what I'm doing so some other costs you might have to think about are permits and this is one that really um, I did not think about when I first signed my lease I didn't think about permits at all didn't cross my mind but if you want to do anything depending on how strict your town is you're really gonna have to seek out permits um, and I'm actually located right across from a like official town like city council building so they see everything I do so I can't get away with anything without a permit um, always call your town first because some towns may not require a permit for certain things and some may so it varies from city to city so for instance I had to get a permit just to change the plastic on my sign um, some cities may not require that so definitely check into your city permits can be anywhere from 50 I think ours are $50 it could be $100 so they can get pretty pricey depending on how much stuff you're you're planning to change on the outside and inside anything with electrical anything that's changing the structure of your building you're going to need a permit for that and you're also going to have to get cleared by the fire marshal get fire hydrants hi, wait fire extinguishers um you're going to have to get fire extinguishers security systems there's a lot of costs involved when it comes to opening i would say i spent around 35,000 ish around that range just to get everything opened in the shop if that gives you some perspective so when you're thinking about your point of sale system you're gonna have to buy the hardware which the hardware cost me about twelve hundred dollars for this um, this and also the card reader I tried buying it used but on eBay people were just like buying them up really quick so I just logged into my point of sale system and it's just really nice because like employees can clock in so I can have um, the blue screen where they clock in and out so we can also have separate passwords for the register so it tracks each person what they're doing you can set restrictions so for instance I'm only able to open up the cash register and also speaking of cash register you're gonna need cash in the register so personally I don't keep a lot of cash in here I empty it out at the end and, and make sure that there's never um, cash just accumulating in this drawer I organize it one tip I will give you guys is don't empty out all your rolls because when you go to count your register you're gonna have to count all of those so keep them in the rolls I actually did empty out everything and I didn't realize it so I organized all of my change and just put it down there so that kind of sums up my point of sale system. Make sure you have like Apple Pay because a lot of people use Apple Pay. Um, I sometimes forget my card and it's really handy when places have Apple Pay. So as far as security systems go, I have a few cameras set up around here. So I use Simply Safe and it's nice. It kind of tracks motion and whenever I'm away, I can see exactly what's happening in the store. I have a keypad and we have a second little smoke detector right above our candle making station in case we happen to forget to turn anything off that is just a secondary smoke detector so i have two in here but i really wanted one over the candle station just for that reason because you know when you work with other people you know it's nice to have that and also the camera set up so you can check the camera and i also have um an app set up so i can actually check if my wax melter is on or off so with the Casa Smart Plug, I can turn my wax melter on or off anywhere in the world. So it's really easy and it's convenient because when I'm in bed and I have to be making candles in an hour, I just turn it on, get ready to go and turn it off. Excuse my nails, by the way. So you can turn any wax melter into a smart plug wax melter all you need is the plug and the app and you can control your wax melter that way so we talked a little bit about the financial part um, there's a lot that goes into the finances I would recommend just having a safety net so for me personally the reason why I felt okay um, getting a storefront in a small town is because I have other streams of income I sell online I have you know other streams of income besides the storefront if the storefront was my primary income source i would 
probably not really make it here. Um, a lot of people have come to me in the community concerned. They're like, I really hope you do well because this is a hard town to start a business in. And it's very true because it's still a developing town. So this is not my primary source of income. Um, it's just kind of a, another source of income. And plus I'm using the larger space to support my online business and creating more candles in the larger workshop space. So that's my advice to you. Really think about um, your finances and all of that before getting into this because it is a long-term thing when you sign that lease. So next up, we're gonna talk about business organization. So when you are getting into this and you're hiring employees, the first step is to get organized. Trust me, I have worked with employees before and the very first time I hired employees, I kind of would just wing it. I didn't have any systems. I kind of would just go along and tell them how to do things, but it really makes it difficult on both parties because as a small business owner, you're probably used to keeping a lot of information in your head and you automa automatically know how to do things, but then it gets really tough when someone new is coming in and it's like this whole um, different thing for them and they've never thought they've never done it before they've never worked with shopify etsy things that come second nature to you so you're going to have to teach someone things from scratch so you have to be very strategic about the people you hire and the position you hire them for so um for instance i hired like a candle maker so i made sure to just have them make candles even though there's a lot more work to be done here i still take on majority of the work because so if I start making my candle maker learn how to answer emails and put listings up on Shopify and um, you know help me with brand deals, help me with filming, that's a lot and that person has never done any of that before. So it's just going to be like mind blowing for them to do all of that at once. So my advice is when it, whatever you're hiring for, try to hire um, the, the right person for the job and just have them do that job. Because I know there's a million and two things you're probably doing and you probably want to pass things off to, to that person or have them do more work. And sometimes they're going to have downtime. Like for instance, if they you know make the candles and they finish for the day, there's probably a million more things that could be done online. Um, and you may feel like, oh, well, why don't you go on Etsy and update some photos or something? Well, technically, you probably need, they're not trained to do that. They don't know how. And it'd be very confusing for them to, for you to give them a little two-minute tutorial and just say, have at it, you know? Um, so I learned that having people do certain things is better than having one person try to be a jack of all trades like yourself. So you're the person who's going to be the most invested in the business because it's your business. So of course you know how to do everything because you started the business. You've probably been working at it 24 seven every day. Um, so don't expect other people to have that same drive as you. Like a lot of the people you're going to hire just want to come to work and they just want to go home. So, um, you just have to make it as easy and smooth for them to learn how to do their job and you know um, don't stress them out too much about the job and try to get them in a good position to where they are going to be autonomous because um, if you're teaching them well it's going to just be a lot easier on you so creating organized systems i'm going to say so creating organized systems like standard operating procedures. You can document your procedures on ClickUp, on Trello. I personally have a training manual on ClickUp and I have been working on creating operating procedures for everything. I created one for how to send an email, how to set up your email, how to make a candle. I have a two-step page with each detail on how to make a candle that I printed out for my employee. It details every single step turn on the wax, heat it to 150, let it cool to this point, do this, do this, it has everything. Um, so standard operating procedures should be easy enough for anybody to follow um, from all the way from the beginning to the end of the task that you're giving them. It takes a lot of time, um, but you can work on that as you go and eventually maybe you can hire an assistant to help you with that. So you can kind of talk through the process, transcribe it and kind of have an assistant put it in a more um, organized way into your ClickUp. So eventually I'm probably going to hire an assistant to help me with that, but 
make sure you have your systems in place, have your inventory systems. So for me, Crafty Base, we do everything in there. Expenses, we track materials. My candle maker does also track the fragrance oils. Um, and so that when we go to ordering things, we can just print out the order, you know, the low stock form and it should make it easy. So having that system in place instead of like just yelling out what you're, you're out of. So if your candle maker is out of strawberry shortcake and they're just yelling out, hey, we're out of strawberry shortcake, you're probably going to forget. So have a system uh, or somewhere in ClickUp where you both share a ClickUp workspace and you can put, you know, what you're out of. We're out of Wix, strawberry shortcake, we need this, paper towels. So you don't have to like remember and it's just going to be a mess if you're trying to remember everything. Also when it comes to organization and employees, set up expectations. So make sure you set goals. You have your one month, three month, year goals. Um, what should they be doing their first month of work? Should they be learning how to make a candle? Second month, they should be making a candle independently. Third month, maybe they should be able to make X amount of candles per day. So really think about what your expectations are um, and set those out in stone right when you hire your employees so they know what they're working towards. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to hit goals and stuff when they know exactly what to do. Also, when it comes to that, you should set expectations for yourself. So keeping everything organized, orderly, keeping materials in stock, making sure that your employee is going to be able to work the day without running out of things, without feeling overwhelmed or stressed because everything's crazy. So that's definitely your job as a, a business owner. And also, like I said earlier, just making the process as easy as possible for them. So the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to organizing your business and employees is accountability. So you need to make sure that if something's not right in your business, if you're not hitting your goals, don't blame other people. You really need to assess what's going on. Look at the situ situation. Um, and figure out what you need to do to fix things and have meetings. So even if you only have one person working for you, have a Monday meeting where you can talk openly about what's going on, what do we need to do, what goals we need to do, what do we need to fix. So make sure you're keeping yourself accountable also. So in your retail space, you're also gonna need a really nice and productive workspace. So no, you're not gonna just lay everything out on some random table and try to work from there. It's really nice to have a workspace that's comfortable and you can have easy access. So thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. I have had this FlexiSpot desk for several months, if not a year. It's super durable and it's easy and fast to put together. So with this desk, there's two buttons where you can toggle between sit and stand mode. It's really convenient for packaging orders also, so you're not having to bend over your desk. But anyway, I absolutely love FlexiSpot. It's held up over the you know, this past several months I've had it. And if you guys are interested in checking it out, check the link in my description to shop around for a flexi spot desk. But anyway, let's get back to the video. So earlier we talked about getting foot traffic for your shop. Um, so what I've been doing around town is since I've moved into this town, I've been going out and talking to a lot of people and a lot of business owners. And this is totally um, out of my comfort zone because online it's very easy to talk to people through the screen and on a keyboard and via zoom but having to go out and actually go out of your way to talk to people is very different for me and I've actually gotten really used to it um, everyone in my town is extremely nice some people have even gotten gone out of their way to come and visit me and chat so talking with the town is going to really help to market your business because other business owners are going to talk about your business because of course the more foot traffic that you get they also get too so it's kind of like a community thing with other business owners um, so that has been something i've really been working on another thing is my town is very small so for me, I was able to get onto our Chamber of Commerce, which is going to be really huge. I haven't gone to our first meeting yet, but doing something like that is going to connect you with, again, other business owners who are serious about growing the, um, the community, basically, because as the community grows, your business is going to grow. So you're going to be able to talk about what's happening, go to meetings like you know, seeing what businesses are coming to town. So for instance, if they're going to be building a Starbucks soon, or if any other 
thing is coming to town that can really help you if you get more knowledge about what your town is doing so that can help grow your business because you can kind of plan around events or things that are happening in town. Another thing you can do is host activities. So recently I decorated the shop and this kind of goes along with the cost um, also. So you're gonna to have to spend a lot more money decorating. Um, of course you want your shop to look appealing. You're gonna to have to merchandise your shop in a way where it looks like welcoming enough to come in. So you're gonna to have to spend money on lights, on um, store fixture, fixtures, on paint which costs hundreds of dollars paint is very expensive paint um little knickknacks and the biggest cost of all is the merchandise so you're gonna have to fill your store up whether it be with candles or whatever you're selling so for me i do candles and also i have gift shop stuff so um that's kind of what comprises my store and I think I've spent over $6,000 on merchandise so far. And I still have a lot more space in the shop to fill up. So the more things you have on the shelf, the more time it takes somebody to look through everything and it keeps them in your store. So I've kind of been looking at my shopping habits and I've noticed that if someone has things on their shelves from top to bottom all throughout their store, I stay longer and more likely I'm gonna purchase something. If you only have a few shelves of product, people are gonna look at it and they're gonna walk out. So you, they have a limited choice to, of, of products. So for merchandise, I have been using fair.com, which it has been an amazing platform. I cannot get over how awesome and convenient this platform is to connect you with other you know, wholesale brands. Um, and they have different net terms. So they have net 60 and for the holidays they had net 90, which is amazing. And you can also do returns. Um, so for instance, I bought a whole bunch of candy from a candy brand and I didn't realize how expensive the candy was for the amount you were getting. And I noticed not a lot of people in the shop are buying it because it is expensive. So I did a return on a lot of the items and you know, you can return the items, but I believe you can only return them if that is your first order with the company. So if you've already placed two, three orders, you can't do a return on some items. Um, so it really is a way to test out brands. If you get something, you don't really like it, it's too expensive, you can do a return and get your money back. Um, you can even like, you know, set it out on the shelf for a little bit, see how it does. If people are walking past it, then you're like, okay, I'm gonna return this. So there are a lot of grants out there for, you know, different people. They do have specific ones. Like, so the one I recently applied for was women owned businesses. So I personally, whenever I get more time after the holidays, I'm going to see if there's any more grants out there because I could potentially pay for new computers or more merchandise for the shop. So look into that as well. Another thing I've been learning is merchandising so putting the merchandise up in a way to where it looks appealing so having everything flat on a shelf actually isn't very appealing so creating more height creating you know um just a more organized way of shopping where everything kind of looks you know organized and on the shelf nicely rather than throwing a whole bunch of stuff up there so i've been learning how to do this and it's actually been really fun for me and i like kind of the merch merchandising part um and also like window displays you're gonna have to spend money on christmas displays and just really making your store a fun staple in the community like if you think back to your childhood you probably had that one store in town that was just always so fun to visit during the holidays and that's kind of the goal for me i want to make something where you know some kid grows up here and they're like oh i used to go to winding with candles all the time with my mom on christmas so that's kind of my goal hopefully next christmas um, i'll be more settled in and i'll be able to do like i was thinking like train sets christmas trees maybe activities so like I mentioned earlier, also supporting local shops is gonna be another part of your branding. So as you go around and shop around and you're gonna introduce yourself. So you're gonna to have to carry your, yourself in a certain way around town. So don't be afraid to introduce yourself and be like, hey, my name's Tiana, I'm the owner of the candle shop. I wanted to pop in, check out your antique store, see what you had going on. And that's gonna strike up a conversation um, with that person. So things like that will bring in new customers because of course that word of mouth marketing is gonna be really helpful for you. I would say that for myself, um, one of my biggest clients is actually my neighbor and she's been living in this town for many, many years. Um, and she has just been bringing people in, talking about it. 
Um, I also joined the town Facebook group, which I can post about my business like every Thursday, which is really helpful because there's like 8,000 people on that Facebook group. But she has been coming in and um, purchasing things all the time and she has a lot of nice stuff to say on Facebook and to other people in the community. So making connections like that can be really great for your business. And also you just meet new friends and, and new people. And that's just like the beauty of having a retail store. It actually puts you into the community whereas online is like a different type of social media community. So I know I like the different aspects. So all in all, my first month has been really exciting. I think I have made about, this is pre Black Friday, I've made about $1,600 in sales, which it isn't a lot, but I did a soft opening, which I didn't announce anything um, because I'm waiting on my fixtures to come in before I make some like huge announcement. And actually me being on the Chamber of Com Commerce, they're gonna be doing a grand opening for me and a ribbon cutting. So that's one of the benefits of um, getting on the chamber. So hopefully once I get all my furniture and actually make the store look really, really cool, we're gonna do more of a grand opening and I'll be doing more Facebook advertising and just kind of seeing how I can bring more customers in the shop. But overall, I've had a really great time meeting new people and it's just, I was a little bit intimidated at first having to be kind of like, out there and talking to people but honestly i've really loved it so far um it's just nice to come in flip on the open sign have a cup of coffee and just like see people trickle in and smell the candles and kind of look around so so opening a retail store is a very complicated process and it was a bit overwhelming for me so i pretty much just took everything you know and did it in small chunks instead of thinking about the big picture and that helped me a lot and also thank you to flexi spot for sponsoring this video you guys can check the description um, if you want to check them out but thanks again for tuning in and i will see you guys on the next one bye